Hi all, and welcome back to this series of me reviewing every single Simpsons episode. This time out, it is season 24, and I wish I could say I'm looking forward to it, but I'm really kinda not. All indicators are pointing towards another bad season, but hey, last season had a few episodes which I genuinely enjoyed. So if this season can accomplish the same, then I would at least have some positives to talk about. This was the season that originally prompted me to quit watching the show though, so I don't remember it very fondly. If you guys are continuing to enjoy this series, then please take the time to like and subscribe. If you noticed, I never even used to ask this of you during the classic era, as I was just having such a blast watching the show. And don't get me wrong, I still of course do enjoy making these videos. I wouldn't do them if I didn't. It's just that these seasons can become a slog, so any morale boost you guys can give me is fantastic. Anyway, as ever, a thank you to the Simpsons Wiki for all their information. And with that said and done, let's move into these episodes. Season 24, Episode 1, Moonshine River. After Bart realises that his relationships didn't last, he visits all of his ex-girlfriends for a second chance. When they all reject him, the only chance he has left is Mary's buckler. However, she moved to New York. My trivia about this episode is that it has a lot of references to the 1961 romantic comedy film Breakfast at Tiffany's. And my best moment here was Marge and Lisa at the Romeo and Juliet play. The season opener gets a incredibly disappointing 1 out of 5. So if you guys remember, in the last season video, I said how I wanted to see less about Bart getting girlfriends, as it is becoming way overdone. So there's no prizes for guessing how I feel about the first episode of this season being about solely that very thing. Even putting that aside though, this kind of felt like 22 minutes of nothing. That may be a bit strong, but the more I think about it, the more I dislike this episode. Once they got to New York, it was even worse. The family wandered around making lame jokes and that was it. They could have made some clever references about Homer's hatred of New York, but they never really did it. A throwaway gag about the food guy was the best we got. Also, Labart and Mary's stuff did not feel at all convincing because even in their first episode, Apocalypse Cow, they were never that close, but here we are expected to buy that there is some deep connection between them. The Lisa and Marge stuff, despite being filler, was still probably the best thing here. I like their take on the play, as well as Marge's line about how activating a turnstile was blowing their budget. That was the only decent joke in the episode. In the end though, this accomplished nothing, unless you consider boring me an accomplishment, that is. Season 24, Episode 2, Trails of Horror 23. The three short stories this year are The Greatest Story Ever Hold, Unnormal Activity, and Bart and Homer's Excellent Adventure. My trivia here is that this episode received a 2013 Emmy nomination for Outstanding Animated Programme. And my best moment was reenacting some of the scenes from The Way We Was. This year's Trails of Horror is a 3 out of 5. The Mayan intro to kick this off was okay, if a little long for my taste. Once we actually got into the stories though, the episode managed to hold my interest almost all of the way. The first segment was a bit short, but it got the job done. It did this with some good suspense and some good animation of the black hole effects. I have always been interested in all things space related, so this type of thing is a natural fit for me. The second part was somewhat similar, only instead of a black hole doing the terrorising, it was instead the devil who young Marge made a deal with. This whole part had a very simple structure, and taking place mostly in a Simpsons house, they didn't bother putting too many jokes in. The use of all the different cameras in every room of the house though, did help the atmosphere, and I liked how it was Marge who turned out to be the one who caused it all. The final part was not original at all, being a trip back to the past, but I think they did manage to make it different enough. Seeing Bart mess up home and Marge's meeting in high school was just interesting, and it was very cool to flash back to season 2's The Way We Was. We also got some nice interactions between young Homer and present day Homer. The ending, as is often the case with these short stories, was a bit rushed, but it's not the end of the world. Overall, this was an average Trails of Horror, I'd say, which was more intriguing than it was funny. Season 24, Episode 3, Adventures in Baby Getting. Marge decides that she wants another baby, but Homer is unable to tell her that he does not feel the same way. Meanwhile, Bart tries to figure out why Lisa is sneaking away after school. So the title of this episode is a reference to the 1987 comedy film, Adventures in Babysitting, and my best moment was Marge buying a new car. Episode number 3 is a 3 out of 5. This was an episode which I feel had the potential to be good. However, there were a few simple things holding it back. One is the Lisa subplot. 
they tried to build up the tension like, oh, what is Lisa up to sneaking about after school? But in the end, it turned out that she was just getting a class on cursive writing. I found that totally unsatisfactory. And the bits of the boys and Skinner were also not good. That story could have been cut entirely, and it would have made the episode better. The Home and Marge story was interesting on paper. It was good to fully explore what the two think about having another kid. Albeit, we already kind of know what Homer's opinion is. Due to this, the story hit a brick wall once they got to the donor place. There were a few solid scenes along the way though, and it was an issue which I was glad to see addressed. As far as the fun moments here, the sinkhole bit was decent, as was Mayor Quimby's solution to it. And I especially enjoyed how Marge used all of the available information online to totally outsmart the cheeky car salesman. In the end, this amounts to a solid, watchable episode that just never excelled beyond that. Season 24, Episode 4, Gone A B Gone. Grandpa mysteriously disappears from the retirement home and leaves behind clues about parts of his life that the family never knew about. So my information about this one is that the couch gag here is based on the Hanna-Barbera cartoon Wacky Racers. And I used to love watching that cartoon back in the day. Well, back in my day, I obviously wasn't around when a cartoon first came out. And my best moment was Lisa playing online poker. This one gets a... 3 out of 5 from me. This episode tried to expand a bit on Abe's past. We don't often get to see much of what happened after Mona left, so I was all for it. Now, the bits with him and this musician were only okay. The emotional moments were not exactly hard-hitting or anything, but it did shine a light on Abe's more redeemable qualities. He clearly did have loyalty to his son when the chips were down, and because of that, he does have a right to be resentful of Homer when he forgets about him. The ending to it all was nice, with Homer and Abe bonding a little more, and Abe actually being able to play a song with his old lover again. The poker subplot I also enjoyed. Sure, it was predictable that all the money would be lost in the end, but there were good moments along the way, like Homer feeling the need to keep stressing that Lisa's college fund was on a poker website. He even had a t-shirt ready to that effect. Once Lisa started gambling, it was interesting just because she was the one doing it. I guess she takes after Marge though, because she soon develops a gambling addiction and loses it all. The Bart reveal was a bit unrealistic, but still a nice moment between them I suppose. If nothing else, it served as a cautionary tale about the risks of gambling and investment. The number one lesson when it comes to that kind of thing is only risk what you can afford to lose. Season 24, Episode 5, Penny Wise Guys. Homer's new bowling teammate is actually Fat Tony's accountant, and he is soon put in charge of the mob in Tony's absence. Also, Lisa is diagnosed with iron deficiency, so to rectify that, she starts eating insects. My trivia here is that the Magnificent Seven theme plays in Lisa's dream while she is riding a cricket. And my best moment was, and I promised Paul McCartney I wouldn't sleep with John. That line from Lunch Lady Doris. This one is a 1 out of 5. This episode not only felt on a short side, but the content we did get kind of went nowhere. I was not invested in this guy, and I found him to be more annoying than anything else. It was also obvious that nothing would change with Fat Tony's gang in the end. The Lisa subplot about eating bugs was just as bad. I mean, that premise is kind of difficult to take seriously on the face of it, and as it went on, they never gave us a reason to care. It also tries to connect with the main story with that basement scene, but that achieved nothing, so they may as well not have bothered. This was not an episode I found funny at all either, although, as I say, that line from Lance Lady Doris was one which got my attention. Not much else to say about this one, just a very boring episode throughout. Season 24, Episode 6 a tree grows in Springfield, Homer wins a MyPad at the school auction and loves it. However, he goes into a slump when he breaks it. That is until Flanders discovers a miracle tree in the Simpsons' back garden. So a fact about this one is that the scene where Homer was at the zoo ignoring his kids was later adapted for a short released on YouTube where Homer is playing Pokemon Go. And my best moment was young Kent Brockman trying to interview Mickey Mouse. This episode gets a... 2 out of 5. This was a pretty bland one, which again they had to pad out with an extra segment at the end. The big deal here is that Homer is feeling a bit down, wins an iPad and enjoys it. Then he breaks it and goes back to feeling down again. It really is that simple. The bit with the Miracle Hope tree was totally out of place and never seemed to add much either. It was also such an overreaction from Homer, especially given how he was the one who created it in the first place. In a rarity for this era of the show though, there were a few good moments here which saved this from being a 1. 
I like the joke about Reverend Lovejoy hovering around a silent auction, along with Homer making that Charlie Brown face. And as I said, the flashback to young Kent losing his innocence after seeing a guy in a Mickey Mouse suit was good. It just makes so much sense for Kent given his personality. Season 24, Episode 7 The day the earth stood cool. Homer befriends his new neighbours from Portland. He soon starts to behave like them in order to get a younger, cooler image. However, the friendship is strained when Bart gets into a fight with their son, T-Rex. So a fun fact here is that in T-Rex's room, he has a banner of English football club West Ham United. Although the colours of the badge are green and gold, instead of the real life red and blue, or claret and blue. And being someone who is English and a sports fan, I of course got that reference right away. I do find it interesting though that West Ham of all clubs was chosen for an episode of The Simpsons, but I suppose that's kind of the point, it's a more out there hipster kind of option. No offence to West Ham fans. And my best moment was Homer's two-haired goatee. This one is a 3 out of 5. The story here is nothing too original, and it might not age the best either because what is considered cool changes over time. That being said though, unlike a lot of this season, there was a focus here in actually writing a script that involves the characters in a believable way. The hipster culture doesn't seem a natural fit to Homer at first, but given how impressionable he is, I do buy that he wants to get on their good side. There were a few good moments which came from that, like Homer only being able to grow hair in twos, leading to his silly beard. It is more understandable that Lisa would fit in with these people, but Marge and Bart had a harder time. Bart at first fighting with this kid, but soon getting over it and becoming friendly with him, does work though, because they are still both kids at the end of the day. Marge's staff was actually the weakest part for me. The whole breastfeeding thing was presented up front, but no real point was made about it in the end. Even the ending of Marge's baby formula saving the town from a fire didn't really do the job. I mean, how does that demonstrate that Marge was right for using it to feed Maggie? It just happened to be useful in this situation. But this situation was totally different from the one that they previously had issues with. So I did not buy the hipster's sudden acceptance about that. Despite the weak ending though, there were still enough interesting things in the episode to make it worthwhile. Season 24, Episode 8. To Cur With Love. The family accuses Homer of not caring about Santa's little helper. This leads Grandpa to tell a story of Homer's childhood dog, Bongo. So my trivia here is that at the end of the episode, Mr. Burns concedes that Mitt Romney lost the 2012 presidential election, but that scene is often not included on repeat airings due to being outdated. And my best moment was the Christmas card of Bongo. This one is a 4 out of 5. The plot was heartfelt and it worked if you just embraced it for what it was, instead of factoring in all of the other flashback episodes and some potential continuity issues. It does seem strange to get another Abe spotlight so soon after the last, but this worked just as well if not probably better, as we get even more of an insight in what he had to put up with raising Homer. He still has his shortcomings, don't get me wrong, but here you can tell that he really did try to put young Homer before himself and was willing to sacrifice a great deal to do so. It just makes you appreciate him a lot more. Homer's relationship with Santa's little helper on a show has always been kind of non-existent, so it did make sense for them to give a reason for that. Him having this dog as a kid which he loved, but had to give up, is a sad story. But Abe once again comes to rescue Homer's feelings by giving him that old card. It was a really sweet way to let Homer know that Bongo never forgot about him, and it wrapped up that story in a very feel-good way. Mr. Burns, once again, being a fawn in a Simpsons side, is also an interesting one. The family can never truly shake that man, can they? The jokes were not great here though, which does hold the episode back a bit, and stops any chance of it being a five. Season 24, Episode 9 Homer goes to prep school. Homer joins an off-the-grid survivalist group who have started to prepare for the end of the world. My trivia about this one is that when Bart draws a face on a rice bag, this refers to the movie Cast Away, and my best moment was the Disco Stew appearance. The potential end of the world gets a 2 out of 5. You would think a plot as over the top as the literal end of civilization would at least throw up some interesting scenarios, or at least some drama that I could get into, but it never really did. This all felt very boring for an episode which had potentially such high stakes. Now I know some of the point was to mark how over the top some Duma and conspiracy theorists are. I don't think they did it in a very clever way though. The typical anarchy type scenario was only touched on briefly and was not explored in any great detail. 
Homer also never fits into that group at all. His personality just doesn't gel well, with the likes of Herman in my opinion, so the whole thing just felt a bit forced. There were a few average jokes, which I liked in a moment though, which is enough to stop this from being a one. For example, Disco Stew after the power goes out on a disco, and Homer's fake wall in the basement, which he forgot to pull a handle on. Those were decent moments, but they are the type of slim pickings which we have to make do with here. Season 24, Episode 10 A Test Before Trying The school district hold tests to determine which school has to be shut down. In the end, it all comes down to Bart's test score. Meanwhile, Homer uses a parking meter he found to make money. My trivia for this one is that the soundtrack heard when the kids are taking their test is Michael Myers' Halloween soundtrack from the horror movie franchise Halloween. And my best moment was Principal Skinner's office being part bulldozed. This episode is a decent 3 out of 5. The main plot about standardised testing and Bart having to pass a crucial test does have traces of a few earlier episodes, but it was still fun at times. Sure, a situation where the whole school's future depends on Bart's test result is very cliche, but it did put Bart in a position of power over the teachers and Skinner, which was a nice change up. I like how Skinner does not even know how to handle that situation, but in the end he has no choice other than to go along with Bart and break the rules himself. The ending was predictable, but at least a callback to the bug means that they put some level of effort into it. Homer's parking meter side plot was a tad silly, but it was harmless fun. Well, I guess it wasn't harmless to the people of Springfield, who got scammed out of their money, but it was harmless to me, so that's good enough. There were also a few decent moments of comedy here. I liked how the devil Skinner was his mother, and Bart and Lisa falling asleep while the other one was talking was also nice. I did not expect that from Lisa. My best moment of there being a hole made in Skinner's office was good being as you could see his mother yelling at him through it. I swear that is some kind of callback to the classic era, but I can't quite remember where from. Please let me know in the comments if any of you can. Season 24, Episode 11, Changing of the Guardian. Homer and Marge decide that they need to pick out new guardians for the kids in case something happens to them. They find a suitable couple, but it seems like they are trying to steal their family. So my trivia about this episode is that it actually ended up being censored for a time in Oklahoma due to the 2013 Moore tornado. And my best moment was Homer prematurely calling the couple fools for signing the forms. I gave this one a... 1 out of 5. Just a poor episode. The first half dragged on like it was only there to fill up airtime. It was so, so boring. The storm chasing thing was nowhere near as fun as it sounds, mostly because it came complete with such wonderful gags, as Homer, Lenny and Carl holding a note for what felt like forever. The second half was no better than the first. It was pointless, predictable garbage. The conflict with this new couple was non-existent really, as we never got to see it first hand. And of course, Lisa and Bart would choose Marge in the end. I say Marge because apparently, they could not give a crap about Homer. They could have done much more with this. I mean, why not expand on the Nedna relationship here? They never even mentioned Ned as a potential guardian, when in reality, he would be much better than most of the people Homer and Marge did ask. Jokes were also very bad. The only decent one was Homer's bungling of the form signing. One of the more forgettable episodes so far. Season 24, Episode 12. Love is a many splintered thing. Mary Spuckler returns to Springfield, much to Bart's surprise. But his failure to pay attention to her strains their relationship. My trivia for this one is that the title is a pun on the film and the song of the same name. Love is a many splendid thing. And my best moment was, well, none. None worthy of mention, and that's the second time that's happened in two seasons. So you might better guess by that that this was a 1 out of 5. This episode was certainly... something. To start off my rant, why are we seeing Mary again so soon? I didn't even like the season opener with her, and this episode was not only even worse, it also made that earlier episode completely pointless. I could not care less about Bart and Mary's relationship, so those scenes held no interest for me. Then the episode goes out of its way to become even worse by introducing Lisa and Marge to give their opinion. Marge came across as the unreasonable one here, kicking home and Bart out for no real reason. But of course, the episode made her into the victim because reasons. Then we had the ending with the party and Homer pathetically apologising to Marge and Bart being unsuccessful in winning Mary back. Let's just hope that this is the last we see of her in a big role. Nothing else to say on this episode. 
no jokes, poor characters, enough said. Season 24, episode 13, Hardly Kirkin. Bart figures out a way to make Milhouse look and sound just like his father. So my trivia here is that the program Ice Road Hand Fishing is a parody of both Ice Road Truckers and Hillbilly Hand Fishing. And my best moment was the ending. So Milhouse becoming a doppelganger of his father gets a 3 out of 5. This plot was definitely a bit far-fetched in that Milhouse should never have been able to pass as his dad. Once you get past that though, and just take it as a fun excuse to put him in a different situation, it works. Outside of the unbelievable appearance, personality-wise, Milhouse slots into the role of Kirk very well, which I guess isn't surprising given the way they both are. It was nice to see Bart and Milhouse have a good time, doing some things that they would not normally have access to. And I also liked how Bart decided to help Lisa out when Marge refused to let her go downtown. I also liked how they kept it fairly low stakes, it would not have worked if they tried to shoehorn in some high stakes finish like they often do. Instead, the ending was a nice little one. It was a nice moment to have Milhouse come out of the experience respecting his dad a bit more. The running joke about the children's books was not very interesting though. And this episode was also lacking some standout moments. This ended up being one of the rare times where I can forgive a lack of jokes due to the story having some inherent intrigue in it. Season 24, Episode 14, Gorgeous Grandpa. After going through his old storage locker, the family discover that Grandpa used to be a wrestler. With some help from Bart and Mr. Burns, he decides to wrestle again. So the trivia here is that the couch gag for this one is the Simpsons version of the Harlem Shake, the Homer Shake. And my best moment was the Storage Wars parody. This one gets a somewhat surprising 4 out of 5. But before I start praising the episode, I have to start off with the Harlem Shake couch gag. I have liked most of the couch gags recently, but this one not only horribly dates this episode, it was also poorly done. It felt very cheap, like it was chucked together in 5 minutes. That grumble aside though, I did enjoy the actual episode here. It started off well with the Storage Wars stuff. I have never been that into that show, but I have seen clips of it here and there, and from what I gather, this episode is very accurate to what it's like. Especially, well, if you caught the right buyer on the right day, you could maybe get $500, and then the guy goes, boom, a guaranteed $500, chalk it up. That is exactly how they count up the money totals in that show. Moving on from that opener, I found the grandpa stuff interesting. Him as this heel wrestler from back in the day, I could totally imagine. I also like how Mr. Burns was a big fan of him. The ending with him and Bart was quite sweet, even if it was a touch predictable. This episode overall was not that funny I would say. This was not that funny I would say. But there were still a few good moments here, like Burns' song or Bart's bad guy antics. The bit about the family thinking Abe was gay was pretty silly though. I mean there was no reason at all to believe that about him. I suppose Marge wanting Abe to be gay just so she could show how accepting she is is very realistic of modern society though. This was a very solid episode that added yet more backstory to Abe, and even had a few Bart and Mr. Burns moments as well. Season 24, Episode 15, Black Eyed Please. After getting angry at Homer's clownish behaviour with his father, Ned ends up punching him. So the title of this episode is a reference to the music group Black Eyed Peas. And my best moment here was Ned's Vision of Hell. This one got a 2 out of 5. I didn't get into this one as much as I would have liked to, Homer was quite irritating here, and it's not like he was particularly funny with it either. He was just overly loud and stupid. It was a very one-dimensional portrayal of him. The conflict of the story is very simple. Ned punches Homer. That is it. They never expand on Ned's feelings about the situation, like the other times he blew up, and the only reason they make up in the end is because Edna helps get rid of Lisa's teacher. Homer and Ned's friendship was no stronger at the end than it was going in, if anything, it felt more artificial at the end. The Lisa subplot is no better. They build up this positive image of the substitute teacher so much in Lisa's mind that it is no surprise at all when she starts being mean to her. I guess the ending to it is okay, given that her reason for hating Lisa is so petty. I also like how Lisa was so quick and happy to take that pretty compliment. Once again, this episode was not funny really, although I did kind of like Ned's vision of what his hell would be like just because it's so tame compared to what it could have been. I am not at all surprised, though, that Richard Dawkins made his way in there. Season 24, Episode 16, Dark Knight Court. When Bart is falsely accused of playing a prank, Lisa defends him in student court. 
Meanwhile, Mr. Burns turns himself into the superhero Fruit Batman. My trivia for this one is that in the crowd shot, after the eggs come out of the instruments, several characters have duplicates. My best moment here was seeing how traumatised Mo is by Bart's prank calls. This one is a 3 out of 5. The Mr. Burns side of things here was weird, but I kind of liked it. The whole Fruit Batman was nonsense, and yet Mr. Burns is actually senile enough to think he is actually stopping crimes. And of course, he is rich enough that Smithers can indulge his fantasy by paying people to play along. Maybe it is a bit out of character for Burns to want to be a good guy, but I view it more as him just having delusions of grandeur. The fact that there was no real stakes involved helped me enjoy it for the silliness that it was. It did also tie into the Bart storyline in the end. Speaking of that egg prank story, it was not that interesting in my opinion. The court scenes with Janet Reno were just kind of dull to me. The one exception to this was Moe's testimony. I love how he is affected in such an over the top way by Bart's prank calls. Even though we have not seen them in the show recently, it is always a nice recurring gag to revisit. Especially in a unique way like this. Overall, this was a very watchable episode that could have just done with a few more funny moments. Season 24, Episode 17 What Animated Women Want After Marge gets frustrated by Homer's actions on a night out, he has to fight for his marriage. Meanwhile, Milhouse takes on a bad boy persona to attract Lisa. So the couch gag here is a reference to the television show Breaking Bad. And my best moment was just Milhouse with his new attitude. This one got a 1 out of 5. Okay, to start off, I'm not sure why there was a narrator here. It felt like an odd choice, as it did not fit the episode at all. It also added nothing to the experience. The main plot was the millionth time we have seen a Homer and Marge troubled marriage story, and they did very little to keep it fresh. In fact, the only reason they got back together was because, in Marge's words, Homer tried. Now, that's not at all convincing, and to be honest, it seemed like the writers were not even convinced by Homer and Marge's relationship here. They knew they had to get them back together anyway though, so they just threw together some nonsense and called it a day. I also have no idea why the sushi restaurant was so prevalent in the story, because it literally had a zero impact. The Lisa Milhouse plot was slightly better, it is about time Milhouse stood up for himself, and it's not surprising, let's face it, that Lisa liked that attitude more. As ever though, there is a fine line between being assertive and confident, and just being an asshole. I am glad that he decided to be true to himself in the end. When you take into account a lack of funny material though, the subplot was not enough to save this from being the fifth one of the season. Season 24, Episode 18, Pulpit Fiction After a more popular minister comes to town, Reverend Lovejoy quits the church and becomes a hot tub salesman. My trivia for this one is that this episode's title is a reference to the 1994 film Pulp Fiction. And the best bit about the episode for me was how the couch gag led into the episode. This one gets a 2 out of 5. Forget Reverend Lovejoy, this episode bored me more than anything else. I actually had average hopes for this when it started out, because the first few minutes were decent. The transition from the couch gag to it being broken in the episode was quite good. I am surprised they never pulled this before, to be honest. The bit about the bug infestation also had potential which was never fulfilled. Instead, the episode tried to do a take on the old, traditional way of doing things, clashing with a newer, more cool way. The contrast between this new priest and Homer, with Reverend Lovejoy, was not shown that well to me, because this new version of church never seemed cool to me at all. Because of that, I just kind of rejected the whole premise here. The ending was also as you would expect, with Lovejoy saving the day. As far as the jokes go, I must have missed them. They did trot out a different spin on Helen's Think of the Children catchphrase though, so that is something I guess. Season 24, Episode 19, Whiskey Business. Mo finds a new lease on life when rich venture capitalists take an interest in his homemade whiskey. Also, Bart is forced to take care of Abe when he gets injured on his water slide. My information here is that some of the things recorded on the DVR include the 2009 Oscar red carpet, Keeping Up with the Krustovskis, Happy Little Elves, among many others. And the best moment here for me was Homer doing CPR to the wrong Bee Gees song. This one gets a 4 out of 5. And once again, I did not expect this to be a 4 going in, but I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. Sure, it was not the hardest hitting plotline in the world, it was not even very original, but it had a number of good moments which I cared about and got invested in. 
It may seem strange to say in an episode where suicide is on Moe's mind, but I actually felt this episode had a positive tone for the most part. The characters were likeable, whether it was Marge trying to help Moe improve his life, or Bart helping out Grandpa when he was in need. Sure, Abe ended up faking his injuries, but who cares? They still ended up spending some good quality time together, and I enjoyed watching it. And yes, the ending of the main plot, where Moe's success ends before it even really begins, is a bit of a downer. But maybe the point is that nothing lasts at all, so just try and make the best of the journey while you can. What really gets this to a fall though, is that there were a number of good jokes and references. As I mentioned, my favourite was Homer, and later Bart, doing CPR to How Deep Is Your Love, instead of Staying Alive. I also liked how the whole family, including the cat and the dog, got mad at Marge for deleting things from the TV. There were also some nice callbacks to old episodes, obviously with the bleeding gums hologram, but also with the Capital City song from Dance and Homer, and the menu at the party having a flaming mo on it. I'm not saying that this is a fantastic must-see episode or anything, but it was one which I got much enjoyment out of. Season 24, Episode 20, The Fabulous Faker Boy. After Marge encourages Bart to take music lessons, he develops a crush on his piano teacher. In order to pay for the music lessons, Marge agrees to be a driving instructor. My trivia for this one is that this is the second episode in which Chief Wiggum was bribed with jeans. The first was the Springfield connection, and my best moment was the couch gag. This episode got a 2 out of 5. This started out decent, but got worse as it went. The couch gag was fun, some good animation, and a good excuse to indulge in Homer's fantasies. The scenes setting up the main story were also decent, like Marge meeting Skinner, or Homer with Mo at the bar. There were also a few okay jokes, like Homer waking up at work shouting, Sausage fingers, after the teacher's comments about Bart's fingers, or Bart delivering just crumbs to Grandpa instead of cookies. It was all well and good though, Grandpa was quite happy to receive his crumbs. That is all the positive things I can say here though. On to the negatives. Does Bart even have a personality outside of girlfriends and crushes anymore? Most of his episodes lately revolve around that in some way. It's become extremely tiresome. Anyway, him cheating on his piano lessons was not that impactful, at least not in my opinion, and the characterization of this Russian guy Marge teaches to drive felt really forced. The Homer story was also meaningless. I mean, who really cares whether he loses his two hairs or not? He has already changed them into a goatee this season after all. It's not like he was ever going to stay bald either. Of course his hair would pop back in the end. Despite this episode having a few smile-worthy moments, the feeling of pointlessness here is just too much to overcome. Season 24, Episode 21, The Saga of Coral. Homer, Moe, Lenny and Coral win the Springfield Lottery. But Coral soon takes off to Iceland with the money. This leaves the other three to go and track him down. My trivia for this one is that, in a rare bit of good continuity, Coral previously mentioned his Icelandic childhood in the season 14 episode, Excuse Me While I Miss the Sky. And my best moment here was the ending. So I gave this one a 4 out of 5. I am all for delving into a secondary character's background, even if Coral was not the one I would expect them to choose. It was also brave of them to also make this into a travel episode as well. Thankfully, this was not a case of them biting off more than they could chew. Then again, I'm not sure about Homer winning the lottery two times in four seasons, but there we go. They had to kick this thing off somehow. This episode may not have been a laugh fest, but it made up for that with some genuinely good character stuff, some good visuals, and the odd funny joke. It is good to get to the bottom of what the four guys really think about each other, and more importantly, what each of them think being a friend actually means. The ending where they all slide back into the same routine I actually liked. I found it very authentic and endearing, that after they all made up, they decided that the best thing they could do was go back to being bar mates and doing the usual guy stuff. After all, Mo said it best. No one wants to hear all that lovey-dovey stuff. The scenes in Iceland were decent. I have actually been very briefly to Iceland, and it was not that cold when I was there. Very expensive, mind you. I never got to see the Northern Lights though, which I have in common with Mo, as he was completely unaware of them. This was a nice little episode overall, and one I'm glad I watched. Season 24, Episode 22, Dangers on a Train. Homer and Marge are celebrating their wedding anniversary, when Homer sees a train that he remembers from their first anniversary. He decides to do it up as a present for Marge. So my trivia here is that this episode was originally scheduled to be the premiere for season 25, 
but was moved to be the finale of season 24 instead. My best moment was the train song and animation. This one is a 3 out of 5. The season ends in a reasonable way here. I did not care much for Marge and this guy online. That felt like an attempt to create some drama that was obviously not going to lead anywhere. Also, Seth MacFarlane as this love interest guy was kind of disappointing. I suppose he did his best, but the character was rather bland, so Seth was just kind of going through the motions like anyone else would in that role. Thankfully, the bits involving the train worked much better. The scenes of Homer and his friends building the train were quite good, and the ending was a sweet one that shows that both Homer and Marge still very much care about their relationship. As I said, I found the ending bit with the train song a nice moment, and the touch of the Gracie Films woman telling Abe to shush was well done. The rest of the episode was not that funny though, which kills any chance this had of getting a 4. Right then guys, that is season 24 finished, and here is a summary of season 24. The overall average score for this season is a rather abysmal 2.5, which continuing a trend from last season is the worst so far. My bottom 5 episodes this season is for the first time full up of 1 out of 5 episodes, and they are What Animated Women Want at number 5, Penny Wise Guys at number 4, Changing of the Guardian at 3, Moonshine River at 2, and the worst is definitely Love is a Many Splintered Thing. In terms of my top 5 favourite episodes this season, it's a bit of a sorry sight, but Hardly Kirk in squeezes in there as a 3 out of 5 episode, and the 4 4 rated episodes are Whiskey Business, The Saga of Carl at 3, Gorgeous Grandpa at 2, and To Cur with Love as a Best. So onto my general overall thoughts on this season. If you have watched this video up until this point, or even just took into account the average score, you will know that I did not like this season. There was only 4 episodes here rated 4 or better, the same as season 23. However, unlike last season, there were no 5 rated ones. That is a shame, as I always like to see at least one fantastic episode in every season that I can really say you should check out. There were episodes here which I would call good. The top 4 were all ones I enjoyed watching. They just obviously don't make the season as a whole worth sitting through. One thing this season did do well was touch on Abe's backstory in a meaningful way. We got to see him in a more positive light than ever before. In three separate episodes, we learned how he had to sacrifice his own happiness for the good of Homer, whether that be saving his dog or giving up on his love. We also got a few smaller stories involving him with Bart, which I also enjoyed. I told you guys that I always look for positives out of a season no matter how bad it is, and Grandpa was certainly one here. Sadly, I can't be as positive about the other characters. The kids here especially got the short end of the stick. Lisa didn't really have much to do at all, and Bart, other than the odd bit with Grandpa and Millhouse, only had one thing to do, and that was worry about girls. That is about all from this season for me. If any of you guys are watching the show along with me, or you've already seen all of the Simpsons episodes, be sure to keep your opinions coming about the HD seasons. Maybe there was something more you could get out of this which I didn't. I honestly hope that was the case. Next season I'm going in mostly blind. So I am actually quite looking forward to that, believe it or not. It will just be good to finally see some Simpsons episodes again for the first time. Anyway, thanks for watching till the end, everyone who did. And if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Take care.